All right. So uh, I guess we'll get right into it. Uh, this talk is about gaming achievements for all. Um, uh, let's see. How do I go to the next slide? Okay. So when games first came to arcades, you have the high score. So people would compete to try to get the high score. Um, as they moved into the home with consoles and with computers, uh, you would end up with games that actually have a winning condition. So you could go over and save the princess. Now, over time, people would go over and make up their own tasks to make the game harder or, or to just try something different. So for example, here we have uh, a screenshot from Legend of Zelda with someone playing it without ever picking up the wooden sword. So instead, you have to go over and get other items to uh, attack at the beginning. Then there are other games that they would go over and they would give you a rating for how you did at completing a level, for example. If you completed it within a certain time, you would get the max rating. If you took longer, then you would get a lower uh, star rating. So people would end up you know, trying to replay the level to get that uh, additional achievement. And so uh, Super Tux, for example, uh, includes how many secrets you've found in the levels and, and statistics like that, how many coins you've collected. So you can go back and try to get everything and complete all the different achievements for the level. Now, the Xbox is where that really changed. All of these were stored only on your local machine. You, you could bring people over and show them how you're doing in your game, but that, that was the extent of the social aspect of it. With the Xbox, they added in the ability to have your achievements online. So you could go over and see what games your friends have been playing, how far they've gotten in the game. Over time, all the other play, uh, platforms have pretty much adopted achievements. So you, PlayStation has uh, achievements. Steam has achievements, and along with GOG, uh, Epic recently added in achievements as well. But free and open source software doesn't have this. Now, there are some simple reasons behind this. For one thing, we have no central server behind the platform. So Sony runs the achievements for the PlayStation because they own that platform. There is no one that owns the platform for uh, open source software. Uh, we're, we're not going to get Red Hat running their own achievement servers. There's also no registering of games. So if you decide to make a game for free software, the game's released. Uh, people can play it or not. Uh, as an additional concern, uh, free software and open source uh, users tend to be more privacy oriented. And so they don't necessarily want to go over and give all their information to a central uh, company. Now, I, I'm not certain that there's anything that those companies can necessarily use with that data to uh, really do much, but th there is that privacy concern. And there's no reason that they need to have that information. Now, we've had this problem with social networks. Uh, and we solved this with 
what's collectively called the Fediverse. So we have a whole bunch of different social networking sites and all of them collaborate with uh, different protocols. So while I'm using a Hubzilla uh, social networking site, one of my friends can use Mastodon and we can trade messages perfectly fine. Now, what happened was free game dev uh, site went over and set up a Hubzilla server. And I had been thinking about this problem with ach uh, game achievements for a while. And so I kept suggesting to different people, you know, the idea of setting up some sort of federated system for that. And so with Hubzilla, it has the ability to have plugins. So you could go over and create new features. And so after uh, Libra Planet 2020, I decided, you know what? I'm going to go over and try to tackle this problem. And I should say that although this, my, one of my concerns is open source and free software, this isn't a problem only for free and open source software. Uh, the problem also affects commercial developers in that now you have to go over and you have to make a separate build for Steam, a separate build for GOG, a separate build for Epic. And so you, you have to maintain all these different versions. And so if you had one version that supported achievements across all of those uh, systems, it, it would simplify things. So this is a screenshot uh, from the Gamerzilla. Uh, so you could see this is uh, one part is the list of games and what achieve, how many achievements you've earned and the total number of achievements. And then you've got one where you've uh, clicked into a particular game and can see the achievements you've gotten for that game and the progress you've been making. Now, I'm not big on uh, development on uh, front ends, so they, they're very minimalistic here. So how does Gamerzilla work? So the, the way it's envisioned to work is that you have Hubzilla running the Gamerzilla plugin, or we could uh, a separate uh, server could be developed. And then you would have that communicating with a game launcher, something like the Steam client. So in this case, it could be Game Hub, it could be Lutris. And those game launchers would use the libgamerzilla library to perform that syncing with uh, Hubzilla and to listen for games that are updating their status. The games themselves would also use libgamerzilla. It would go over and connect to the game launcher and whenever you achieved a, you got an achievement, it would send the information over. All of this information is cached and will automatically resync. So if you play the game offline for a while, then load up the launcher, it will automatically send all the data over. And if you decide, you know what, I don't want a Hubzilla site with my achievements loaded online, that's fine. You could still look at the achievements in the game launcher if you wanted. So what's the current state right now? Um, currently, Super Tux Cart uh, has merged support. Uh, Super Tux Cart is written in C++. Uh, there's a game Small Trek that I added in support to. The developer doesn't seem interested in merging that. Uh, that one is written in NIM. Uh, there is Seahorse Adventures that I forked so that I could update it to Python 3 and add in support. 
Uh, there is Shippy 1984, uh, which again was one of these unmaintained projects that I added support to. Uh, I recently made a pinball disc room game for the uh, disc room game jam. It was written in Godot, and so I added in support to use Gamerzilla from Godot. And Me and My Cha Shadow is another game that I've added in support to. So far, they haven't merged that either. And finally, for launchers, I've added in, I've coded up support in Game Hub. Uh, that's written in Vala, and it hasn't been merged yet. Uh, the developer is working on doing some refactoring and doesn't want to merge it until that is done. Uh, they, the free game dev has offered to enable the uh, Gamerzilla plugin for Hubzilla. And that has been done, but it's currently not working for some reason. So I, I'm still trying to track that down yet so far. Uh, the reason I listed the languages here was to show that it is capable of being used anywhere. Uh, I've It was written in C specifically so that it would be easy to use on other systems or other languages. If you want to get in touch with me, here is uh, my email address, my social networking site, and I'm often on the free game dev forums as uh, the user Dulcie.